Hi, thanks for joining me. This is a short video um, just looking at you know absolute basics of 3D printing and this one is looking at uh, support structure and how you can avoid it. So this is starting off with a you know a very simple model, just a cube, solid cube in AutoCAD and exporting that as an STL <coughs> and once that's done we'll import that into the slicer in software so we load the file just looking for it just now so cube STL and open okay and then we want to just have a look and see what happens when we at the layers that this is built up of now you can see over on this this side I've I've set it to use support everywhere and use a raft to build the model onto so the cyan color is the raft the red is the external wall uh, green is the internal wall and then we've got this yellow uh, mesh in the middle which is the support structure about 15% I think this is set to and then we get the very top layer so let's compare that to a shape that has got an overhang okay so it's the same cube but we've got two little overhangs working in it this time and let's just have a look at the same way looking at the layers so we start off with a raft okay but this time you can see it's starting to build some support structure so we've got more of the cyan material coming in to support these two overhangs and because they're you know exactly horizontal you know it's quite a major amount of support but if you just flip that component through 90 degrees and then look at the the layering uh, things look comp a lot better okay now the time hasn't changed much the time to complete the print has changed hardly at all but it's it's the 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 stuff that you have to do afterwards that you're more concerned with you know the cleaning up of the model so let's take this a step further and look at angled overhangs okay we've got one angle here at 45 degrees and then the other angle at 30 degrees okay so it depends on your your, your slicing software and your printers capabilities what's going to happen with the with the amount of overhang but the the machine I use, a, a Creality uh, Ender 5, anything 30 degrees or below requires the support structure. Okay, so you notice there was no support structure under the 45 degree. But, you know, simple twist through 90 degrees there and look at the layers again, and we've got no support structure at all. Uh, and this is much better for your, you know, for the for what happens later with the model. You do a lot less work cleaning things up. Let's have a look at curves instead. So I've got curved overhangs. Okay, so one is a, a, a pure arc, you know, a kind of a 90 degree arc, and the other is a just a more gentle one. So we don't get any support structure where the angle is less than, where the tangent angle is less than 30 degrees. Sorry, it's more than 30 degrees, but you can see there's quite a considerable amount of, of support structure there. Okay, do the same again, flip it through 90 degrees, and a little accidental horizontal rotation as well there, wouldn't make any difference though. Uh, but let's have a look at the slicing again. Okay, and we've got no support structure whatsoever so you know the there might be a, a bit of you may not be quite so keen on the way the 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 slicing's done but um, you know as far as cleaning up the model it's, it makes a big difference so this is a much more complicated shape the vaulted ceiling okay and you can see you know I've got a crazy amount of support structure okay the the grooves at the top those kind of big kind of notches they're intentional they were just kind of testing the the angle as well to see if we could reduce the amount of support structure okay a, a 180 turn this time let's get it onto its back 
Okay, we can see the kind of complexity of this and then have a look at the layers. Okay, so it's on a raft again, but you can see, you know, virtually there's until we zoom in, we can see a small amount of support structure just under where the the column capitals are. So they were they were needed to kind of join the the model together. So I'm just going to jump to a few slides to show you that in a finished state. Okay, this was printed using 0.2 millimeter layer thickness. Okay, but you can see a little bit of debris around these, the tops of these, and you know there's a a bit of a mess here with the with the layering. You know it's possibly the temperature in the room. Um, that's all I can think would kind of cause that. But you know generally there was nothing else there to tidy up apart from a little bit of of scaffolding just underneath those column capitals. Okay. Bit of a blurry one there, I'm afraid. And that's kind of way what I did, just made a simple base for it and printed the columns separately. Uh, just really to, to kind of keep them as clean as possible. Okay, so what we'll do next is have a have a look at uh, another project that I've been working on and um, this is in AutoCAD so I've been modeling some frontages of buildings uh, kind of Edwardian kind of era Edwardian Victorian buildings um, in and around Dundee and what I'll do is I'll I've exported this as a single model okay so this is all solids okay and I've exported it as separate pieces Okay, it's just so you can see the, 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 the difference in the kind of quality that you end up with. Okay, so what we'll do is look at this in the slicer first. Okay, so we've got the complete kind of structure and as separates. Okay, let's have a look at this in layers now. Okay, so everything's rafted, which is fine. I generally tend to use a raft. I think it kind of it's, I find it actually easier to get them off the uh, off the the print bed. Is that if you kind of fuse them straight on, they tend to stick. I'm not that keen on brims either. There's always a bit of kind of cleaning up to do on a brim. So you know, for the sake of a few extra minutes or half an hour or maybe even an hour or so, I, I ch tend to prefer a raft. But let's bring this up and have a look at just how the difference in the amount of of uh, support structure that's going in. So as you can see on this one, as I go up, there's actually, it's actually kind of creating support structure inside the wall as well, even though, even though it's actually solid. Uh, perhaps there's a small gap somewhere that it's detecting and filling that in with support structure. Could be that um, a, a wall is too thin. That's also can be a problem if you've, if if not all your walls are the same kind of solidity then it kind of treats it as a kind of a weak spot. But you can see on the on the separate bits, on the, where it's all separate, there's a tiny bit of support structure just under a detail at the, the front of the door. Okay, but over here we've got, you know, a massive amount of, of support structure. I can never get this to pan properly. It's, it's an annoying kind of way of working but let's have a look at that in the the kind of finished finished images and the finished print okay so I'll just so that's it with the the support material broken off and you can see you know, it's pretty pretty scraggy um, I've got a close-up of the upper window next and you can see it's it's even though the glass that was put into the window was a solid surface it's not kind of treated it so it's kind of kind of broken through into the inside of the model um, and you know the the amount of of kind of striation here is also pretty unsightly we're not seeing the detail very well okay but I've broken that into separate pieces and printed them individually okay to back off a second and then 
we get by printing it flat you know there's generally a much cleaner cleaner finish here so no no change was made to the model between the two the two two sets but because this was print, printed horizontally this area it's it's actually kind of treated it as a solid object where it didn't when it was arranged vertically you know printing things in in sections you know you're going to get join joins in the model uh, but I've actually kind of kept these loose um, so that I could actually kind of move them apart and eventually maybe glue them together later on so you know it's a pretty basic thing um, but it's something I found you know really improves the uh, the, the quality of, of my, my 3d printing uh, so hope to see you again sometime soon